A reading from the second book of Maccabees. It happened that seven brothers with their mother were arrested and tortured with whips and scourges by the king to force them to eat pork in violation of God's law. One of the brothers, speaking for the others, said, What do you expect to achieve by questioning us? We are ready to die rather than transgress the laws of our ancestors. At the point of death, he said, You accursed fiend, you are depriving us of this present life, but the king of the world will raise us up to live again forever. It is for his laws that we are dying. After him, the third suffered their cruel sport. He put out his tongue at once when told to do so and bravely held out his hands as he spoke these noble words. It was from heaven that I received these. For the sake of his laws I disdain them. From him I hope to receive them again. Even the king and his attendants marveled at the young man's courage because he regarded his sufferings as nothing. After he had died, They tortured and maltreated the fourth brother in the same way. When he was near death, he said, It is my choice to die at the hands of men with the hope God gives of being raised up by him. But for you, there will be no resurrection to life. The word of the Lord. What is so important in your life that you'd be willing to die for it? We see in the reading, brothers, that for all of the brothers, the laws of God are that important. But come now, each of us has personal limits, some line beyond which each of us would not transgress. What would you die for? Peace? Justice? Love? Well, without the resurrection, there is no universal peace except in death. And without the resurrection, can there really be justice for all the unrewarded uh, atrocities and injustices committed to the innocent? And without the resurrection, love is merely an echo between two lovers, which is quickly silenced. The resurrection, this is the thing, it can't be invented. If we were to invent it, it would just be this mass fiction, a grand deceit. And if the resurrection were no more than a philosophical proposition, well, who would double down on that? In our reading, the fourth brother, or the last brother, it's hard to count, when he was near death says, it's my choice to die with the hope God gives of being raised up to life. It's a hope. He knows that God has the power to do it, but he has no right, no reason to expect that God should. But we brothers... We have full assurance. Christ has made this abundantly clear. Now, given this assurance, are you then willing to die for him who died for you? Oh, sure, brother. But what are the odds that I'm going to be martyred for the faith? True. But is your devotion such that you're willing to die a thousand daily deaths for love of him who is beauty itself, goodness itself, truth, truth itself. Will you die of embarrassment to bow in the creed in awe of the beauty of the incarnation? 
Will you suffer detachment from transient goods, personal mobility whenever a car is available, financial independence, adulation for every good deed that you perform for another brother? Will you detach yourself from these so as to claim the highest good as your one true possession? Will you suffer to be marginalized and proclaim the truth that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of all mankind? Will you draw a line in the sand and say this far and no further? Will you be a fan for Jesus or a fanatic?